you should respect the fact that we've probably seen the bottom and that everything that you see now, all this fat is actually part of the old Hello everyone, today our guest is popular YouTuber, crypto, Bitcoin investor and trader Rand Nooner, who in this video talks about the role Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Fed, is playing to destroy the crypto sector, as well as discussing the macro outlook, Bitcoin charts and so forth. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Like it or not, for crypto investors, the U.S. Federal Reserve policy on interest rate hikes and high inflation is the single most relevant measure for gauging demand for risk assets. By increasing the cost of capital, the Fed boosts the profitability of fixed income instruments. But this is detrimental to the stock market, real estate, commodities, and cryptocurrencies. One positive aspect of the Fed's meetings is that they are scheduled well in advance, so Bitcoin BTC $21,680 traders can prepare for those. Federal Reserve policy decisions historically cause extreme intraday volatility in risk assets, but traders can use derivatives instruments to yield optimal results as the Fed adjusts interest rates. I think that this Silvergate thing is part of this Operation Choke Point, and this Operation Choke Point is exactly what it sounds. What it is, is effectively the authorities, the U.S., trying to choke the on-ramps and off-ramps to crypto to make it almost impossible to get new money into crypto. And then the result of that is, if you can't get new money in, but you can withdraw, then effectively you bleed out the, the liquidity in the crypto markets. And that is exactly what's actually happening here. I'm not the only one who, who says it. Um, you see over here, you've got uh, uh, the Kabisi letter, which says, you know, four days ago, the entire crypto market collapsed in a matter of minutes. Over 200 million was liquidated within an hour. And then since then, Bitcoin is trading completely flat. It just posted its lowest daily volume since 2015. Liquidity is drying up in real time. So we are starting to face a real liquidity crisis in crypto. And the reason why we're having a liquidity crisis in crypto is because there's just no way to get money into the crypto ecosystem. Yes, you can take your money out. But none of the banks, after they, they removed Silvergate, there's not many banks that will allow people to actually put money into crypto. And this is part of the, the, the U.S. government's a um, uh, uh, grand plan. It's it's now obvious that it's a coordinated plan that is doing this. You see that the White House said that they are monitoring Silvergate reports. So you can see that the the that even the White House knows exactly what's happening, and they are monitoring exactly what's happening with crypto. And it's coordinated. They want to cut off the the oxygen to the crypto markets. That's their way of actually destroying the crypto markets. Actually, just cutting off. The, the oxygen supply, which is the money supply. And as a result, when people see the market flat or you think that this is a great buying opportunity and you want to buy it, you can't actually buy it because you can't get money into the crypto ecosystem. And so what we get is we just get a slow bleed going boring and then maybe slightly down because people can take money out of, of the ecosystem. Um, so that's, that's what's happening. That's why everything is so quiet. We do have Powell speaking later today. Uh, I'm quite interested to see what he's going to say. We'll talk about, about Powell speaking uh, in, in a couple of minutes. Um, speaking about blocking this oxygen supply or the or ability to put money onto the crypto ecosystem, it's not only Silvergate. There was another story today, which again, just reiterates this whole thing. You can see that that story is that Dapper Labs, now Dapper Labs, they own NBA Top Shot, they own Crypto Kitties and a whole lot of other NFT projects. They were the creators of the Flow blockchain. Now, they used to use Circle as their ACH withdrawal option. So if you wanted to withdraw or to get money into the ecosystem, you would they would use Circle. But Circle just dropped the automated clearinghouse payments, which means that, again, another one of the on-ramps and off-ramps to crypto is kind of cut off. Because Dapper Labs said on Monday, it can no longer process automated clearinghouse payments due to its partner Circle. It announced on its public Discord server, Circle has made a decision to stop processing ACH withdrawals for all its partner companies effective immediately. So another one of these on-ramps and off-ramps to crypto, effectively getting removed, getting destroyed. One of the signs that I'm seeing, a lot of people are seeing, 
is we are seeing an increase in open interest, which is futures positions. So the reason why we can see an increase in futures positions is because you don't need a lot of money to open a futures position. It's not like spot where you have to put down a lot of money. Like if you want to buy a Bitcoin on futures, you take a 10x leverage, you can buy a Bitcoin for $2,200, you can get all the exposure. But you can't do that with spot because you need $20,000 and there's a liquidity crisis. So what we are seeing now is we're seeing the open interest on all the exchanges getting much bigger. We saw it on Bybit. We saw it on Binance. We're seeing it on all the exchanges. People are starting to take a whole lot of leverage. That means that eventually a move has got to come and the move's got to come pretty soon. It could come today when Powell speaks. We'll talk about that. That could be one of those things, but it could come after that. You can see it's it's uh, Binance, it's Bybit, all the, yeah, yeah, you can see this chart over here. Here is the op the uh, aggregated open interest on Binance. Bang, look at the increase in open interest. So people are taking positions here at this flat line level. People are actually taking a whole lot of positions. And what that will cause is it will cause some kind of unwind of the positions, either up or down, because you don't know whether people are taking long positions or short positions. You just know that they've opened up a whole lot of positions. That's it. You don't know, are these long positions? Are these short positions? We don't know. We just know that right now, there is an open interest that is being opened. And it's not only on Bitcoin, it's also on Ethereum. So we've been following the Bitcoin open interest positions. Um, uh, and and, and um, we've been opening the, the Ethereum positions. So you can see that there is volatility that's going to come in. The other thing that we saw, a lot of people are talking about it, so we'll also talk about it, is the fact that there have been stable coins that have gone onto exchanges. $1.4 billion worth of stable coins has actually entered exchanges in the last, say, 24 hours. Okay, so $1.4 billion. It's that little green line over here. What is interesting here is that the last time we had an inflow into exchanges that big was on the 18th of November, which was just after the FTX collapse. So let me show you where it happened over here. So we go back to 18th of November. It, the, it was around just before the bottom. You see, so the inflow went in over here, then Bitcoin bottomed, and then people started to buy it up. So we could get, if you look at the stats here, what it's showing you is that we have just had a, a little collapse. And maybe these stables will actually be used to buy up the Bitcoin price, which kind of makes sense because it is all part of the crypto cycle and it's nothing to be alarmed of, al alarmed at. It has felt a lot worse before. We, I mean, in 2017, 2018, 2019, in the bear market, we thought that crypto wouldn't even survive. That's how bad it is. And so when you think now about the SEC attacking Binance and uh, Kraken and all, and all those things, and you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, crypto will never survive this, you know, with Operation Choke Point and, and all the, and all the, um, the, uh, the way that the SEC is suffocating the on-ramps and off-ramps onto the crypto market. You may think to yourself, well, you know, how is crypto actually going to survive this? And I remember having that same feeling back then, but it is actually all a part of the, the crypto cycle. And I did see this which I think is quite telling. It's, it was done by, by the, the rational route. And it is a, it shows all the halving cycles. And it shows like, if this is the halving, and then you, you know, after the halving, you carry on going, where do you get to all time highs? And where do you get back to the bottoms? And you can see that if we follow the pattern, you can see that the all time highs actually really, really, really corresponded. And so have the bottoms. And if this, Halving all time, halving cycle map, time map is correct. Then we have seen the bottom, which by the way, corresponds to our fundamental thesis. And generally what will happen now is we'll start going higher and higher and higher to, into the halving. And then also after the halving, if, if the cycle repeats like all the other cycles. And this is the most accurate, if you want to predict a bull run, the halving has been the most accurate um, measure around these bull runs. Now, I don't like using it because it's a four-year cycle. And for my attention span to follow a four-year cycle is like, it's almost like ridiculous. Like, oh man, I have to wait for four years for the next halving for the next all-time high. But it is the one indicator that's actually worked. If you look at 2017, that was a high. And then four years later, what do you know? 2021, there was another high. So 
I mean, you have to respect the halving, as someone says in the comments. You have to respect the halving. And if you do respect the halving, um, then you should respect the fact that we've probably seen the bottom and that everything that you see now, all this fat is actually part of the old cycle. It's the cleanup operations of the old cycle. It's not about the new cycle. It's a cleanup operation for, for the old cycle. They are not stopping. They continue to attack CZ. Binance claims innocence while not rebutting U.S. senators' concerns. They wrote an article about the fact that CZ came onto my spaces. He spoke about how innocent he is, but he has not rebutted U.S. senators' concerns. On our spaces, what CZ did say is that he said he would respond, and they are drafting a response to Elizabeth Warren. So he will be he will be uh, a drafting a response, and as a result, you know, just give him time. But what you can see that the FUD machine is out in full force. It's Forbes. And it's Forbes. It's also Wall Street Journal. There was an article yesterday. In that article yesterday, there were some damning accusations. Um, you know, things like Binance programmers in Shanghai had control over the software code that supported Binance US. Remember, this article was around the fact that Binance US was not ring fenced from Binance um, International. It was just a subsidiary of Binance International, which was really um, uh, unregulated. Um, uh, a Binance U.S. spokesperson said the Binance company never mixed user data. While Binance said it would no longer accept U.S. on launch, its officials discussed ways to keep U.S. investors out to keep U.S. investors via the use of VPNs. It's also possible that Bitcoin's low emissions could prove to be a benefit as investors realize that the Fed is running out of options to curb inflation. By raising interest rates even further. It could cause the U.S. government's debt repayments to spiral out of control and eventually surpass $1 trillion annually. This creates a huge incentive for Bitcoin bulls. But extreme caution is needed by those willing to make trades based on interest rate hikes. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.